Rode microphones are the official microphones of Be Terrific. Find out more at rodemike.com. Welcome to the Michael Artsis Show. I'm Michael Artsis. What a weekend. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. Missed you guys a lot, but I had a great time hanging out with my boy Jack. He's 21 months old tomorrow, and guess what we did this weekend? We sat on the couch, we got together, and we laid together, and we watched the first 20 minutes of Back to the Future 2. Back to the Future 2 is my favorite of the Back to the Future movies, and he was totally into it. He loved the DeLorean. He loved the sneakers, and he loved the hoverboard. And then, you know, Jack is a kid, so he got distracted and found, I don't know, Curious George or Henry the Huggle Monster or something else. And he went and started playing with that and then wanted the Apple TV and changed the channel and all that stuff. But we just had a blast watching Back to the Future 2. And I just think we got to come up with ideas to celebrate October 21st, 2015. That is the day Marty travels to in the future with Doc and Back to the Future 2. We've got to figure out a way to celebrate that this October 21st. So, guys, bring your ideas to us. Connect at BeTerrific.com. You can also hit us up on Twitter, at BeTerrificTV. Instagram, the same thing. And, of course, we've got our IRC chat underneath BeTerrific.com slash live, underneath our video player on that page. You are watching live. It is the Michael Artsis Show. Don't forget, you can hit up our hashtag cube on set. Send your photos. Upload them to Instagram and put in the hashtag Be Terrific TV Stage. We want to hear from you. Of course, you know, we're on daily with the Michael Artsis Show. We've got Toy Fair coming up this weekend, the 14th, 15th, 16th, and 17th. We'll be live from Toy Fair in New York City. I'm so excited for that. And, of course, you can also watch all of our archive stuff on YouTube.com slash Be Terrific and, of course, our app as well. So check all that stuff out. Now, you can also join another IRC chat right now that is really awesome. It is the GeekBeat IRC chat, and you can find that by going to geekbeat.com. And the reason why all the geeks are watching, hi, geeks, we love you so much. Thank you for watching, is because Callie Lewis is our guest today. We had John P. on last week. We've got Callie Lewis. Thank you so much for joining us from the great state of Texas. Callie, how's it going? Wonderful. Actually, you know what? October 21st, I love the Back to the Future stuff, and October 21st was actually my first dog's birthday as well. It was. So I think we have to be extra special about the celebration that you have planned. What was your first dog's <laughs> name? We got to figure something out. We got to do something super <laughs> cool. You know, my it's funny. when I My first job, I said this to John the other day, my first job ever was working at Jerry Cosby Sporting Goods in uh, 1994. 94, 95, and that was in Madison Square Garden. I was selling hockey equipment, and they, uh, I used to have, like, you know, hair, um, <laughs> and I'm short, and I was... I've seen pictures. Yeah, yeah <laughs> yes, and, and I was short, and um, a, a little bit thinner, not as chunky as I am today, and uh, they would call me MJ because I couldn't reach anything um, <laughs> for Michael J. Fox, not for Michael Jordan, Nice. And, uh, and, and they would literally, and you know, I, I dressed, I guess, a little preppy. And so I would be MJ and I couldn't reach anything. I couldn't reach the jerseys in the, in the ceiling and I couldn't reach anything. So they'd call me MJ and, uh, I've always loved back to the future, but this yes. is the year the air mags are supposed to come out. And this is the year he traveled to, which by the way, none of it's happening. Maybe the sneakers, maybe we'll get some auto lace sneakers. I know we have the air mags without the auto laces, but maybe we'll get some auto lace sneakers. Nike's keeping us in the dark. Nothing but else. We has have come seen the new Kickstarter project, right? That yes. has the hoverboard over, what is it? Um, over copper. I think it, it has to hover over copper. So as long as you have copper under there, it can hover. So we're getting there. Yeah. 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 We're, we're getting there, but we're <laughs> not there. That's, that's the key. Um, all right, so what about you, and when did you get into tech? I want to talk about that. Like, what was your epiphany that you thought tech was cool, especially being a girl? Um, and I don't mean that in a bad way. And I, we, we, love the, uh, we love promoting STEM for girls. We love promoting women getting involved in all technology. But you grew up in a time where girls didn't get into tech. So how did you get into tech, and when did you know, oh, I love this? When did you fall in love with tech? 
I fell in love. It started fairly early for me at eight years old, um, which isn't as early as it could have, right? As, as early as everybody is these days growing up. But um, at eight years old, I remember walking into the bedroom of my mom's, or my mom's bedroom. And she was, so she worked two jobs. She was a super hard worker, um, an RN nurse and going to school for more and more uh, schooling and more, um, uh, you know, better jobs. And so she had this uh, word processor. It wasn't even a real computer. <laughs> um, and she was typing away on that. And I walked in and I was hovering over in the doorway. And I just remember looking at it and thinking, wow, that thing is awesome. And so I told her that she needed to teach me how to type and that she needed to teach me everything about it. And I picked it up very quickly. Uh, it was it was something that I spent as much time on as I possibly was allowed. Um, I would just you could do I mean you could do things with word processors like type and put little daisies and little icons and stuff like that. And so I would just do whatever I could. And then uh, my dad, they, my parents were divorced. So when I went to my dad's house soon after that. Um, he had like a, a real computer with MS Paint on it and wow. you know, all the applications. And so I would spend hours on that. And he had a Nintendo and I would, I would uh, stay up or, or I would get up really, really early before anybody else. And I would turn the volume down to like one so that I could barely hear it, but nobody else could. And I wouldn't wake up anybody. And I would play Duck Hunt and Super Mario Brothers and whatever else I could get my hands on. So those were my first uh, early memories with uh, tech. And, and I always just, I was good at it. I, I, I liked, I liked all of it. Um, and uh, it just kind of grew with me, I guess. Were you a tomboy? Because oh, I don't, God, yes. you were, I don't see oh, you as yeah. a tomboy, but I, I guess, you know, it makes a lot of sense that you were a tomboy. You did play sports too. Yes. Um, so I, would, I guess that makes sense, but I don't, I don't know why I don't see you as a tomboy. <laughs> well, yeah, I was very, very much a tomboy. I still consider myself a bit of a tomboy. Um, I like to get dressed up and be girly every once in a while, but, uh, I, I wear my t-shirts and that's my signature look. And I will put, as long as I, if I'm not on camera, you can be sure that my hair is up out of my <laughs> head, hair face. It's like, I, see these? Yeah. hair bands all the time <laughs> um you know so yeah i grew up playing sports uh spent a lot of time outdoors i didn't really have a lot of access to computers uh growing up uh except for what i what i told you and so anytime i could i would um and as as i got older i was able to spend more time and, and learn and, and when i was about 14 i started learning to code um built my first website from pure html wow that's insane <laughs> really yeah how did you do that back then i mean uh, th that's hard today they yeah. have classes they've got books they've got tutorials on youtube we're talking about you had to figure this out completely in the dark by yourself basically throwing darts in the dark um you know i mean it <laughs> It didn't feel as hard as it feels like a sh it would have been now. You know, like looking back, it feels like it was a lot harder than it than it is now. But back then, I just there were books, there were HTML books, and uh, so I got got a couple of those, and I just started playing and learning and just fiddling, really, wow. which is what we do as geeks, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. What was that site? What was it called? Oh God, you know I. I mean, I had Luria Petrucci, which is my real name, LuriaPetrucci.com. I don't even know if I have that now or where it leads or whatever. Wait, wait, hold on. Uh, go back. What's your, what's, what's your real name? Luria Petrucci. Okay. And, and, and when did you change it to Callie, and how did we get Callie Lewis? Yeah. Um, Callie came about when I started doing online videos. Uh, Geek Brief was uh, my debut <laughs> for online uh, technology videos and that was back in 2005 uh, so when apple first uh, released their very first video ipod uh was back in october or november of 2005 i remember that well i yeah. ran to get one because i was doing a podcast called hey listen radio from uh my place on my off days from new york one 
um, and, uh, and, and I went to go get the video iPod to see if, you know, it would make sense to make it a video podcast. Yeah. And, and so that's, that was my thought exactly with the video iPod is that people were going to be looking for video content. Um, and so, uh, my ex-husband, uh, and I, we, we started Geek Brief back then and it became very popular, uh, very quickly. And we were very lucky. Uh, timing was, uh, it was, it was wretched. I'll tell you that right now. It was really <laughs> wretched, but during that process of creating it, uh, my name, Luria Petrucci, it's a beautiful name, I think. I love my name, and I, I, I'm not shy about telling everybody who I really am. <laughs> um, and I'm actually trying to embrace that more these days uh, because actually I kind of got, I, I kind of got wrapped up into Cali, which I just I did because everybody butchered my name my entire life, and I thought doing video. Maybe I needed a simpler name, more American or something. Um, so that just kind of came from... Well, look, that in the entertainment world, that's the first thing they tell you if you have a weird name, right? So I had Michael <laughs> Artsis, and when I started, they were like, you, you, would you consider... So the first thing they said to me is, I had a goatee, and they said, shave your goatee. And I went, oh. I went okay, fine. <laughs> well, they, they said to me, if you're serious, you'll shave your goatee. And I, I shaved it. And they were like, all right, maybe he's serious. And I really argued. I said, I don't need to shave this. Uh, there are other people on TV with facial hair, but I'll shave it. And, you know, now I go back and forth. I do whatever I want. But yeah. um, back then I shaved it. And then they were like, you should change your name. And I, I really was like, no, that's OK. Well, it's really hard to say. I said, that's your problem. And, you know, but you have to be so strong willed. And then I remember the whole conversation. Well, maybe you should be Rodriguez, <laughs> Michael Rodriguez, because that'll help you get uh, jobs in television because they'll think that you're Hispanic. And I said, that's awful. I will be <laughs> lying and misleading people to, to get a job. I want to get a job because I'm qualified. And on top of that, I don't want I, I just it was wrong. Right. So I said, no, I'm not going to do that. And then I'm not going to change my name to make it simpler uh, or so less people make fun of it. Uh, I'm going to keep and there are plenty of things you can do with my name, which are pr pretty fun. Um, but I'm going to keep it my name. And I really thought long and hard about it at one point. And I really thought that, you know, I tell the story where I was close with my grandfather and I really thought that it would make him proud. And that if I changed my name, that it wouldn't make him proud. So I, I but I get how there's a lot of pressure to change your name to make it simpler. So I get where you went down that road and I don't fault anybody who does it. For me, it was wrong. But I did right. shave and, my goatee and then I and, put it back. And with your grandfather, the same same actually applies to me. I my my dad's name, Tulio Petrucci, that means the world to me. He he passed away many years ago, but I'm kind of a daddy's girl. <laughs> and he had he had four daughters and no guys. And you know, I I don't I'll never change my name, uh, my last name, and I kind of, I, I want that to live on, you know, and that's the way I can carry that on is, and, and I'll never have kids, but you know, it's, that's my, my legacy, right? So from, from that perspective, I'm totally with you. And sometimes, you know, I, I question whether I should have even gone that route of, of changing the name. Um, I don't think people necessarily have to, I think you were right to stick by that. And um, certainly, that's who I am, Callie Lewis, to a lot of people. Uh, but the girl behind Callie is is me, you know, Luria. Well, is so. Callie is I, I kind of feel like, and maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like Callie's kind of the character that you've created, and you're. I think that it's a very honest character. It's very similar to who you are off camera, but I think it gives you a little bit of separation and off camera. Maybe you're a little bit more shy, and <laughs> maybe um, you're you're a little bit. Like, it's just a little bit different. It's almost like you created a character, Callie. You're a terrific person both ways, but and you're very similar, but I think it's almost like a character. It gives a little separation. Yeah, you're right. It is It is somewhat like a character. I don't really like to use that word character because Callie is me. Right. Luria is Callie. It's all one and the same, right? It's very, as you said, it's very honest character. Um, but Callie is definitely more outgoing than Luria. <laughs> um, I, people don't believe me when I say this, but I am extremely shy. I don't like 
to be the center of attention. I hate going to parties because all I want to do is hide in the corner and just watch people. That's what I've done my entire life. I when I when I was a kid, I didn't talk to people. I I was so shy because I couldn't talk to people that um, people thought I was a snob. Like I heard that after I grew up that people thought I was just a, a big old snob because I didn't, I thought everybody was, you know, beneath me or something. When in fact it was just, I just couldn't bring myself to say anything to people. <laughs> so it's, um, it, it's definitely a more outgoing personality, right? And, and that helped from one perspective of kind of getting me out of my shell. So, what I mean, how did you want to be on camera if you were so shy? I, I know what wasn't your dad in the field? Uh, did did that kind of give you the impetus to want to do this? Did you look? I mean, I know you looked up to him. I know you had a close relationship, but was that kind of the impetus to wanting to be on camera? No, actually, I never wanted to be on camera. <laughs> that is uh, definitely not something I even desired. I kind of did it because. As a geek, I was playing with this new technology called podcasting and RSS feeds and video online and all of this was new and it was brilliant and it was giving people the power to, to say what they wanted um, and it wasn't in the, the hands of big media anymore. And so just from a geeky technical perspective, I was just really intrigued and I was kind of forcing myself in front of the camera. I never wanted that. Uh, but yes, my dad, um, he actually was a producer. Um, uh, he's an artist of many kinds. <laughs> One of those things is a, is a producer. He, he won an Emmy. Um, he, he produced, uh, commercials, documentaries, TV shows, those kinds of things. So. Do you and your sisters fight over who gets possession of that Emmy or do you guys like six months it's here, six months it's there, you know, uh, 12 <laughs> you months know later what? you get it again? Unfortunately, I don't know what my dad did with that Emmy. I never have seen it in my entire life. And um, I do know it existed, but I think I think he might have given it to somebody <laughs> before he died. I don't know who. Um, and so actually I was thinking about it. We were talking about it the uh, a couple months ago uh, over Christmas. And I think we could probably ask the foundation for a co another copy. I, I've been told, so I don't know. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to have to go find it. I'm going to tell you how to do it. Oh, okay. Claim it was stolen. Um, <laughs> claim it was. Sto I mean, it was stolen. He didn't that's give it. it to anybody. <laughs> that's it. If if it, if you call the Emmys and you say it was stolen, uh, they will they will allow you to buy a second one. They're very strict rules, and there should be. But yeah. in, in a scenario like this, absolutely, his children should be able to be bestowed that wonderful honor that he was as well. Um, and uh, I respect those rules very much. But in a, in a case like this, they need to, to take that seriously. And uh, the Emmys, uh, the National Academy of Television, Arts and Science is a wonderful organization yeah. that I'm proud to be a member of. And, and um, so, yeah, absolutely, you should reach out to them. And I think you guys definitely need that. Um, and then you yeah. can figure out who gets it for, you know, every quarter you have to figure out how to ship it to the next person's house. But Yes, um, exactly. And, you know, it's it's interesting. Um, uh, uh, today's show, today's Geek Beat that has not gone out yet, it's still in editing. I actually show off a couple of pieces of art in my office from my dad. And one of those is his television production um, studio, uh, which is actually just about a mile and a half down the road from where I we have the Geek House, wow. uh, which is ours. And, and that was incredible to find out. It happened, I found it after we got the Geek House. And so it was very coincidental. Um, and was uh, it hard, that's really cool. Was it, that is cool and, and it's amazing. Uh, was it hard having divorced parents? Uh, I found it to be very challenging, especially back in, in, in that time period. Uh, you and I share a bond over that. Uh, not that you're old, but at that time <laughs> it was still frowned upon. Now I, w one in every two marriages ends in divorce, so it, it can't be that odd, right? Um, right? But back then it was still shunned upon, and I almost feel like maybe that's one of the reasons why you were shy, because, like, I was shy, believe it or not. Nobody believes that, um, I but I really was. And it, part of it is because there was, like, this stigma that, oh, he's the divorce kid, right? He's that. So, did you have that? Was that hard? Um, I don't 
particularly remember a stigma surrounding that. I was too young when it began, when when my parents were divorced, and so I didn't go through, um, I didn't go through that process of oh they're getting divorced and seeing the result at school of people separating from me. So I didn't have any of that. I was just very young when that happened. I don't even. I don't know how old I was, but I I certainly wasn't even in kindergarten or, you know, so I was just very, very young. Um, and I mean, it was hard. Uh, there, there was a step family involved and, you know, I didn't, I, I certainly didn't really grow up with the best of childhood childhoods, but that's, that can't stop us from, from moving on. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and clearly, you know, it's not easy. Uh, you know, that firsthand, you're a survivor. Um, so you're into tech, and how do you get to, let's do Geek Brief, what are you doing at that point with your career, with your life, um, and how do you get to that point of let's take this? So you, you, where I know what you're doing is you're building HTML, you're building sites on your computer, HTML, uh, on your own as a young girl. By the way, uh, just to give the chat room a little love, Paul Dixon uh, had an Apple Power Mac 4400. He thought it was terrible. Brian <laughs> says he remembers it. It was 1600 bucks. And Digital Phil says Phil is his real name. Um, so we got to <laughs> give some love to the chat room. But uh, you, I imagine you coding on a very basic PC in the beginning, HTML, and then your young girl. And where do you go from there? And, and how do you get to doing podcasts called Geek Brief? Um, there wasn't a straight line, that's for sure. Um, it, you know, I, I was coding and I was uh, learning different languages. And I, I certainly, I'm not a developer by any means, but I, I, cer I, I certainly love code and I, and I have a, a, uh, a high respect for people who do. Um, I've never, outside of websites, I've never built anything like apps or, or anything. But um, I... During the, the boom in, what, 99, um, I was doing websites and you know, making money that way, and then the crash happened, um, and I just went out and got a regular job. Um, I did some modeling, uh, and... Modeling? That's a newsflash. Yeah. Callie Lewis, see, <laughs> I said to you once that you could model, and you laughed at me, and I guess you <laughs> laughed at me because I was right. Uh, of what I know of photography, you could definitely model, and you did. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. For a while, maybe, maybe I was just being embarrassed um, and shy yeah. to, to not say that. But <laughs> so you, you didn't like modeling then, I would imagine. It's a lot of attention. It is a lot of attention. You know what's interesting is, as much as I hate attention, and it's the reason I'm probably, I love what I do. I like performance. I did ballet for a long time too, and I like the performance of that. Um, just the expression of an art form. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a weird combo. I don't really know how to explain that because I hate attention, yet I I like the performance. So uh, for modeling, it was the same thing as ballet. Um, and it's actually kind of the same thing as any speaking engagement I go do as Callie now and as, you know, any uh, hosting See, so this engagements is, I do. This is where I say that Callie is the character and Loria is, is, is you, is really who you are because Loria is the shy young girl who is still likes to be shy and maybe, <laughs> I, I'm imagining now, uh, kind of stay at home and watch movies in sweatpants. And Callie is the is the character, again, same person, very honest about it, but Callie is the person who's giving the speeches and performing and doing the performance art. Yeah, it, it's very much it's very much true that way. And you know what's interesting is, last night I was watching um, a panel um, from the cast of Nashville. I don't, I don't know if you know that show at all. It's a really I, I, good... Yeah, I, I know it. I actually know the uh, prop master for that show. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I love Nashville. Great show. Um, I love music, so anytime there's music and a TV show involved, I, I'm, I'm there, yeah. um, as long as it's good music. <laughs> and um, and so I was watching, there's a, on Hulu um, Plus, I was watching a panel at some event, some conference or something, uh, from the cast of Nashville, and Hayden Pinatera, 
How do you say her name? Penitentiary. Oh, yeah. I, I always think it's, I don't know. I get it totally wrong. I just pronounce it <laughs> Hayden Patronid, whatever. Right, the girl right. the girl married to Vladi Klitschko, the, the world <laughs> champion easy. boxer, who just gave birth and said babies ruined her body for her whole life. I mean, but she's oh. beautiful. She's a beautiful girl. I, hey, I don't know. She was in Heroes. My, my yes, Jill would know. My wife would know. She she likes the show, and she probably could pronounce it. I'm butchering it terribly. I, I apologize, Hayden. I'm sorry. Yes, it's I ha- apologize too, Hayden. Yeah. But we'll just call her Hayden. Hayden, How about that? perfect. So Hayden actually said on the panel that um, that she has terrible stage fright as well, and uh, she doesn't like to be kind of that center of attention either. And she also mentioned that Beyonce, when she goes on stage, she has a character, and I forget the name that she used, but she has a character that she gets into um and so i think it's a fairly common thing with actors or people on stage or people in front of the camera uh to to have that side of of them that's kind of the reserved side and and need a character to get uh to get themselves out there to break away from that shell i guess yeah no i think it's i think it's very common I, i i really do um and I think I think it's it's interesting to learn about the two sides of Callie Lewis. Um, I, seriously, I'm not I'm not making that up. So you you are working a regular job. You're modeling. I, I think we've got some modeling pics we're gonna pull up in a, oh, in a minute here or something. No, I mean look, you've posted them on your Google Plus, yes, and I did. Uh, you know I, I think uh, Paul Dixon was nice enough to hook us up with the link. So thanks, Paul. <laughs> Paul's good with the links. And by the way, it, the the pictures. I was gonna ask you what kind of modeling you did, but uh, Paul beat me to putting them up. And so we can skip through that, but uh, beautiful shots. And so you're doing modeling and you're doing um, a regular job, which I imagine was you in an accounting office or something. <laughs> what, what was it? I was, I was doing real estate type okay. work. And um, it's at, at that point that I was, um, that, that I became aware of all this podcasting. This was in 2005. And Like I said, I was just a geek trying to learn and trying to figure out what this new technology was. And it became obvious once Apple was releasing the the video iPod that that it was going to be something. And so I just wanted to put some content out there and uh, we did. And tech was something that I was passionate about. And everybody at that time was like, you know, do stuff that you love to do that you can talk about for a long time and I was like okay I could talk about that and so it just tried and failed and succeeded all at the same time <laughs> and uh, kept growing from there where did you do the original podcast were they out of your living room I mean I can't imagine you started with a nice set like you guys have today oh, obviously gosh, I know no. you, you've moved to the geek house from <laughs> the original geek beat set but where did you guys start this in, in, a, in the living room of, of my house, yeah. So at that time, um, I had I invested, we had invested in like a $250 camera, just this wretched little handheld camera that wasn't really anything major. And um, I needed a prompter. Turned out, uh, we just figured out how to put the camera and uh, like a monitor that had the, uh, the text underneath. And so you can actually see in the early versions of the show, you can actually see my eyes moving from camera lens to prompter, from camera wow. lens to prompter. If you, I you don't, you it, ditched, I would have just looked at the prompter and not had the back and forth, but I didn't. <laughs> you've ditched the prompter at this point, though. You don't use a prompter anymore. I do variety, actually. Um, you so do? So for the daily episodes, I yeah. do use a prompter. Okay. I haven't used a prompter in God knows how many years since yeah. New York won. I, uh, I, well, I can't say that. I've tested some prompters and used some. Uh, you know, it's, it's just the biggest thing is I don't want to operate my own prompter, and I've done it, but I can't stand operating my I could do everything, right? Like, yeah. I don't mean it like that. I can text. I can be on the, the chat room and do all this stuff. But the second you ask me to operate my own prompter, I get, uh, I, I'm like, oh, my God, i got to operate a prompter and do this. So then you have to have a person that just operates a prompter. It seems like such a waste of a manpower. Yeah. So I, I go away from using a prompter these days. But well, you can do I, a I foot pedal cool. or something like this. In our case, Dave Curley, who is the producer of The Daily Show mm-hmm. of Geek Beat, he runs the camera and does a prompter at the same time. Hi, Dave. He just popped in. Hey, hey what's up, Dave Curley? <laughs> um, 
Um, and so, you know, we figured out how to use our resources in, in doing multiple jobs. The traditional way of doing things in production is to have one man do one job. And if that's hitting the space bar or the enter button over and over, that's all they do, right? Yes. <laughs> and we both know that from traditional production stuff. Uh, but in, in these days, now you can you can kind of combine efforts a little yeah. bit more, and, yeah, no, and that certainly helps. Absolutely. And and Dave does a wonderful job. He it, does. You know, you, I, there are the scroll wheels. I've used them all, and the kick pedals. And look, when I have to, I have to. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm good without a prompter. I'm happy without it. But Yeah, but, so the reason I do yeah. prompters still with uh, Gibi Daily is because I'm trying to keep it short. So I'll right. write the script out, um, and then I'll ad-lib a lot. You know, I do a lot of ad-libbing, um, joking, and making, you know, different comments here and there uh, throughout it. But uh, everybody works very differently. And so I do that in order to keep out ums and pauses and keep it to five to seven minutes. Uh, the live show, though, is completely unprompted, um, unscripted did, at all. When did you start notes. When did you start doing the live show? A lot of people saying in the chat room, that's when they got hooked. Um, I think the live show is excellent, and I think that that's, I, I don't want to say that's the best thing you guys do. It, but it <laughs> hey, is, everybody has their preferences, right? But, but that's, I personally like it the best, and I think it's what uh, is the most exciting. I, but I love live. I don't know. I'm weird like that. No, live is addictive, you know? It's addictive from the host's perspective. It's addictive from the audience perspective. It's engaging you can do a lot with it it's unpredictable uh things go wrong all the time so it's it's a wonderful medium i love live uh we started doing that gosh 2007 i would say it was probably the first live that i did and that was probably an apple event like coverage of an apple event so sure. watching the stream or actually they weren't doing streams at that time, watching live blog coverage and from the living room of my house doing coverage, like just commentary wow. on it. So I think that was probably the first live a, I ever did. That's not a bad idea actually, you know, I, <laughs> but I, I was thinking about doing the Super Bowl like that this year, like yes. sitting there and commenting on the game so people could just watch the game, turn off those awful announcers and just listen to a bunch of guys who know football talking football it's kind of what you were doing i think it's such a great idea and i like that um you know checking out the live blog i think it's so interesting you were all about the video ipod and yet you're an android gal um <laughs> and not th there's nothing wrong with it i'm just well, saying i used to be a very very big I iphone yeah. girl and and I we've just got like, some Cali. I got to stop you for one second because Pete just put this up without giving me warning. We've got some Cali <laughs> modeling shots going up. Finally, it took a little while, um, but finally we got them going up. So you can keep talking. We're going to show these shots. Right. It's <laughs> no, gratuitous, completely machines, gratuitous. So, um, yeah. So actually, Ben at Ray Thig in the chat room, one of our team members, he says 2011 for Geek Beat Live of the regular live show. So that's I guess when we when we really started going strong on that. Um, and I forget where I was going. With oh, that. I was just saying. So <laughs> yes, absolutely. Easy to lose lose your train of thought with that. I was talking about. You, you said you used to be an Apple gal. Uh, yeah. And 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 now you know now you're just agnostic. Really is really what it is. I guess it is. Yeah, I use everything, and I love things. I love different things about different OSs and different devices. Uh, but it's my job to know it all, right? Yeah. And so I use. I use both platforms. I actually like really like Windows Phone. Um, I don't use it on a daily basis, but Android for me personally, outside of work, actually with work, is is really great because I can uh, I have more control over it, right? And that's the beauty of iPhone of iOS is that it doesn't need anybody fiddling with it it works perfectly as it is out of the box and you don't have to do anything to it and so that's great for one type of person for me android is great because i am tied to google in almost every way they pretty much own me <laughs> from gmail that, to google docs to, to everything does that ever scare you because to me like even with apple they both first of all they both own me that's the worst yeah. part about it. I'm, I'm an apple guy and they both own me now and I just, it really scares me, especially when I start, you know, like I did something the other day and Gmail was like, oh, we want to take this over. And then it basically is like, we want to start serving you. They asked me some weird questions and I just was like, I don't, 
know if I want to give this up. And I kind of sometimes I just go, ah, screw it. They already know everything. And I've <laughs> had, I mean, Pete can actually verify this, that I, we did a shoot um, for my video production company where we, we did something with a former CIA agent. Uh, he was running security for us. And he said, before you hired me, I did a background check on you with my old buddies at the CIA. And I didn't know he was a CIA guy when, he, when we hired him. And he's like, I did a, but it was only a five minute, like top of the line, you know, background check on you. And I'm like, all right, cool. That's a little creepy, you know, <laughs> um, but okay. Like I've passed secret service checks. I'm good. Like I don't have anything to hide. And then like a couple weeks later, the guy sent it to me. He said, just in case you want to look, this only took five minutes. They had pictures of the inside of my house with my current furnishings. They had every car I've ever owned with the license plates on it that I owned them with. They had uh, all sorts of stuff that really rocked my world. It really, really rocked my world that they had all this info on me that it only took five minutes. And it was at that point I also kind of realized like, what, I don't want to give my information to Apple? It's already out there. Like, uh, how am I going to hold this back? And there really is no off the grid. So yeah, you know, it is it is a very scary thought, and I do think about that all the time. Uh, we choose, the, the bad thing is, is that we, as consumers, we choose convenience over keeping privacy uh, secure, right? And that is a slippery slope. So they do have all this information about us, and they uh, pretty much own us in every way. And we're continuing, with all these connected devices and all of this... Um, the sharing of information between our fitness bands and our phones and just everything that's going on these days with technology, it's wonderful, it's convenient, it's awesome, but it's also very, very scary in terms of the amount of information that we're willing to give up for those conveniences. And I do think that consumers have to put some thought into that. Absolutely. Uh, 60 Minutes ran a piece with DARPA Dan on last night. <laughs> and excuse me, I'm still getting over this cold. And DARPA uh, Dan was saying that we're completely unsecure. They asked him, should we build a new web and start over? And they said, he said, no, but you have to realize that everything you put in your house that's a connected device, uh, all the stuff we're using, it's all unsecure and we have to make it secure. I don't know how we begin to make it all secure, <laughs> but certainly we have to think about what we're doing uh, yeah. as we're doing it. All right, let me ask you some, some really cool stuff here. First of all, um, I promised when I had John on, since he pushed this off to you, that I would ask, what is and, and he basically pushed it off by saying that the vision of GeekBeat is your vision. Whatever you want is what he wants to make happen. So what is your vision for GeekBeat for the future and, and, and where is GeekBeat going? Um, so, you know, we have grown. People, I'm just going to start back a little bit. People ask me all the time why, why I like robots so much. And if you watch the show, you know how much, how well, into robots I am. I was going to ask you that. You just, you're interviewing yourself I'm now. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it's going somewhere, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the reason I love robots so much is because you are taking all these random pieces, all of these random things, these objects that are dumb, that don't do anything, and when you piece them together, you can create something that is autonomous, that moves by itself, that does things and makes decisions by itself, and it's this, this process of making something amazing and incredible out of completely nothing, which is what I feel we've done with Geek Brief and now Geek Beat. Um, and so that is, that's kind of been my, my vision over the years, right? Is, is creating this, this amazing thing that exists on its own <laughs> um, that, uh, that started out as nothing, no talent, no uh, knowledge, no experience. Um, and my ultimate vision for this, for this company is to to create something that exists on its own, um, where I am not the center of it, um, and, and I will always be here, <laughs> but I'm not going anywhere, <laughs> but that, that we have a, this amazing team. Uh, everybody who works at GeekBeat, both here physically, virtually, uh, around the world, are they're just incredible. Uh, talent out the wazoo, knowledge base is incredible, and 
I look forward to the day when we have this growing entity that um, that anyone can step in in front of the camera, right? And I can go on a, a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, no. um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't get a lot of that oh i know exactly how you feel with that one um absolutely and 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 look you've built an amazing community we're proud to uh, i'm proud to be part of it we're proud to be part of it as be terrific and and syndicate to you guys and do all sorts of cool stuff together and yes. you have built a, a great community but it's really about the people when you started, did you know it was going to be a community like this? And, and, and I don't mean necessarily when you start a geek brief in, you know, the living room, but when you kind of said, okay, it's geek beat. Now John's gotten involved. He's my, we heard the story. You guys are best friends. Did you think that, um, at that point, like, all right, we're going to build this community and, you know, we're going to have a community and a place for people to kind of congregate virtually and gather and talk the same language. Yeah, at that point, it was fairly obvious to me because because I had already spent four, four and a half years uh, building that community, right? And so it was, I, I knew that existed and I just really wanted to harness it a little bit more. And um, at that point, it really was just me really going at it, a two-man show and at, at the geek beat turn, um, it, it was important to me to grow that out. And right now for the future of geek beat i'm really focusing on strengthening some of our core uh core business uh models right is just really focusing on strengthening that stuff and expanding expanding those so that we have um you know full stability which is always what what a company needs right <laughs> and making sure that everybody is uh, taken care of and that the community is consistently there and that we can grow um, beyond what, what we already are. So, I mean, it's just, it's an incredible thing. Brian wants to know what Geek Beat will look like in 2018. What, what will it look like in 2018? We're talking about three you years can't, away. You can't even answer that, you know? I mean, it's 2015, that's three years away. Well, what is your hope? I hope, I hope that we have this uh, amazing group of, of hosts that, um, that are passionate about a variety of different things, that we can expand our audience based on those passions and um, allow everybody to get something from Geek Beat uh, that, that is what they want, right? Um, the, with with a small number of people, you can only deliver so much. So with with a, a little bit of expansion from the infrastructure standpoint here, um, I hope to be able to, to grow the audience even more and provide more variety. Uh, that'd be great. I, I think that that sounds like a really nice vision um, and uh, I, I definitely hope it comes true. Uh, I. What do you do for fun? And, and don't tell me you play with gadgets because I already know that. I know you play with robots. What do you do to decompress? What do you do for fun? I know vacations don't exist <laughs> very much, but what do you do for fun? Um, so I, it is recent, that fairly recent, that I've, that I've actually forced myself to, um, uh, to take some time off. <laughs> Everybody knows me as a workaholic, and I think that that's uh, it's got its, its pluses and down more, more downsides. Probably lack of sleep, all of that. Um, but uh, I've you know recently found happiness in my personal life, and I love the outdoors. I love spending time um, taking small adventures. So wait, what is adventures what is what I can? But what does that mean? Happiness in your personal life? Does that mean you found somebody in your life, or you found a, a balance for yourself, or both? Both. Oh. Wow. So, Very nice. Yeah. So wait, so you, you've got somebody in your life. Yes. <laughs> is, is this breaking news? Does anybody know this? I didn't well, know. Yeah. This. I mean, you know, people have seen this for a while. So, okay. And, so, and does this, does this person have a name? <laughs> I, I, why not? Uh, David Foster, who is, uh, works, works on the team. Um, uh, it, so yeah, we've known each other for a while, and so he, Very, I don't really talk about that publicly, but um, why not? It's you, Michael, right? Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, I, th I appreciate you sharing that with me. I, I really, I had no idea. And congratulations. I, I personally, I think David's a great guy. He's a lot of fun. That dog is unbelievable. You, you, you spent a lot of time. Is that Abby, right? Abby the Chihuahua, Oh, yes. she's so cute. And David's such a great guy. I'm glad. I'm so happy for you. And you love the outdoors. What uh, What do you love doing? Obviously, the motorized kayak we, we talked about with John. Um, yes. What, but what do you love doing? Is it hiking? What's your favorite passion? I love uh, hiking. I love stand-up paddle boarding is one of my favorites. Um, I love getting out on the lake. Water is the ultimate relaxation for me. Uh, so anything I can do, kayaking, uh, water skiing, stand up paddle boarding, uh, it's, that's, that's my oasis is, is water, but anything woods, um, hiking, just being out at the park. I go to the park a lot. Um, those are, those are my kind of moments to recuperate. Sounds good. I need to take some lessons from you. I definitely need <laughs> to figure out how to get outdoors, but I need, like, I know I watched you eat like a scorpion or something. I need to get to the outdoors <laughs> without touching any of that stuff. And, and I'm going to need to teach Jack this. So you're going to have to help me here. Teach me how to create fire with my hands and um, do it without getting dirty. Um, but no, <laughs> I want to be more active outside. I've, I've got the, the, the I've got like 10 of these activity trackers I'm testing now. What about uh, you got to So you got to teach me about that stuff. And I think that it's real serene. At least that's how I feel. My biggest thing is, I don't know. I listen to jazz music. I can't figure out how to relax. I live in New York. What do you want from me? Um, <laughs> hey, they have. I heard that they have this big park in the middle of New York. I mean, yeah, New Yorkers don't even know what that is. Um, <laughs> no, we do. We, I just, I don't know. I've never gone to it uh, five times in my life. So, Callie, what about uh, your favorite gadget ever? What is all time? If you have one thing, they're sending you to Mars. You can only take this one thing. I don't care if it's sentimental or it's functional. What is your favorite gadget? Oh, you're killing me here, Michael. I know. Um, um, the Q-Cat? The w <laughs> <laughs> Oh, god. No, I mean, you come on. What? Like, I know if you tell me I can only have one thing, it's an iPhone. I'm pretty sure that's what it's going to be. I'm going to think what? long and I hard. Maybe a say, microphone. It might be a microphone. Uh, I think my up desk. Yeah. I, I, I know how weird that sounds. A desk? But my up desk has changed my entire life. I can't um, believe you said that. I sent you an article yesterday that yes. the up desk with the with the treadmill makes you smarter. Yes, it's true. Who knew? I, feel I gotta, smarter when I use them. Now I got to get one. So your up <laughs> desk would be the thing. I think so because I I am passionate about my desk. <laughs> how weird is that? But the motorized sit stand desk is just a brilliant addition to my life. And of course, I love my phone. I can't get off my phone. Um, but it's, yeah, it, that thing has changed my life. Fights have broken out around the Geek House because the Geek House has 30 up desks in it. Um, and so we all use them. Wow. And fights have broken out about changing uh, up desks and making sure that everybody has one. And so, yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> To, it's one of those like must haves for me. I need to get with the up desk. I really do. Uh, I think I, I kind of think I would like it. I, I, I like standing. Uh, I sit though when I do work, but I feel like I would be okay with standing and, and with the up desk, you can change it. So you could sit if I wanted to. Um, so I got to check that out. What about your relationship with John? It just seems like that is just one of the most amazing friendships and, and it, it fostered one of the best stories in Geek Beat. Such an inspirational story. I mean, you talk about starting this thing in your living room, having no television experience other than the fact that your father worked in the business. But really, I mean, the business had changed so yeah. much. And having to figure out all the technology, having to figure out how to do all this and actually do it. Um, and then having, you know, you've got Dave Foster and Dave Curley and Dave Peterson and Gord and Ben and Scott and all these great people that work around you that now are part of the team uh, directly with you. And then of course you've got all the other guys who are scattered around the country yes. and stuff. Um, it's such a great inspirational story, but it all really centers, I think, around this relationship with John. You know, the expansion of it, of it did for sure. Um, Dave Peterson and Dave Curley were two guys who have been around 
from the very beginning. Uh, they were viewers. Um, and Dave Peterson was, was the most committed community member of my entire existence. <laughs> like when, when we were doing Geek Brief, uh, it, he was always there and he was always supportive and taking care of, of me and Neil and uh, the community as a whole. And, uh, and when you get people who are that committed and, and involve them in the process, which is what we continue to do, it, it makes amazing things happen. Um, and so, yeah, as you know, that is the thing that I have learned throughout this entire process is, is it really is all about the people that you work with. Um, I've learned so much from all of these guys and John and uh, everybody who's, who's on the peripherals even as a, as a community. Uh, it, it's invaluable. Um, you, you, you've got to surround yourself with, with people who who can teach you and who can, uh, and, and that's not, not necessarily just teach you things, um, educational things. It's also, you know, people who can teach you about, about life in general, right? Um, because that all feeds into business. And so that's been, that's been super important for the growth of this business. Yeah. And I, I think that you have to surround yourself with people who can push you further too. What yes what's the best advice you could give somebody starting out today, somebody who's young? I love giving advice to young people or asking for advice for young people. Uh, we have a lot of young people watching. What is the best advice that you could give to young people? It is important to, to follow your passion, to, you know, everybody says follow your passion, but that's hard at times, right? Um, it's, it's you struggle with it how do you make that into something that's viable you hear often parents telling you teachers telling you people telling you uh well that's not viable that's not practical you, you need to to do something practical to make money um and and a lot of times that's probably true um but if you if you can be um if you can be more committed to, to other people, and that's actually uh, something John, John has said a lot, right, is uh, he who's most committed wins. <laughs> um, and, it's, and it's absolutely true. It's a motto of the Marine Corps. Um, you have to, to show commitment. You have to be dedicated um, beyond what other people are willing to do around you in order to, to kind of succeed. And, and again, surround yourself with people who are good influences and, and um, can push you, just like you said, Michael. Well, I, I couldn't agree with that advice more. I think it's great advice and it's so true. And, and look, I just, I always think about this one phrase I saw in a locker room when I was a kid and it said, no matter how hard you're working, the guy in the next locker room is working twice as hard. And yeah. it's just the most motivating thing in the world. And so when I don't want to work or when I'm tired or when I am ready to throw in the towel, I think of that. Yeah. And y that's what you're talking about is commitment. You have to be willing to bleed for what you want and, and for what you want to do. And I would add one other thing. Yeah. Um, know when to quit certain things, not quit entirely, but when you try things, you know, when you do try things and they're not working out anymore, know when to, to put that to rest and continue forward with something else. It's a very fine line, but it's a good point you brought it up. Is. And it, it's hard to know when that is, especially when you're passionate about it. But I like all your okay. advice. Callie, thank you so much for coming on. We didn't even take a commercial break for you or for oh. John. We usually do interviews that are 15, 20 minutes. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I just couldn't, <laughs> no, it's not, I'm sorry. I couldn't let you go. This is how great it was. So thank you so much. You have to come back on more frequently. We're so happy to be part of uh, the Geek Beat family and stuff. We're looking forward to syndicating Toy Fair and a lot of other stuff to you guys. Um, and I want to leave you with this because I meant to start with it, but I forgot. I thought about it all weekend, and I just forgotten all the craziness of my running around. And that is an introduction, which I normally would do for you. So... <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll make it as a ring walk out instead of a ring walk in. Still heavyweight champion of the world, <laughs> Callie Lewis. Wait, did you just call me fat? I, I said, uh, yes, I did, I guess. Heavyweight, <laughs> yes, I did. You are, oh, you are anything but fat. By the way, before I let you go real quick, 
is there a Geek Fit app coming out? Is that what I'm hearing? Whoa. Uh, you know, we've done a lot with Geek Fit. And to be honest, I have been slacking hard because yeah, I've been so sure. busy. Um, but yeah, you know, John has continued that uh, really regularly, which uh, I'm very proud of him for doing. What are you, what are you a size um, two? And, are you a size two? Every woman yeah. complains about how, how fat they are, and literally. Are you a size two, a four? I'm usually about a four. It, okay. it depends. I mean, the, the problem with sizes is that it really doesn't matter because you can go into one store and be a size. I, I am a size zero in some stores, yeah, it, and I am a size eight in others. It's like, all based on the fit model. I, we could go on for this forever, <laughs> but I will tell you, I know one thing. I only said that to say you are not fat in any way. So oh, but, I, I was just teasing. You but there is a geek fit. Comment. There is a geek fit app coming. doing an app yet okay but, uh, but something we'll, to help people get on get on the geek fit program yes if we can if we can make that uh, a thing that is certainly something that we've that we've discussed and want to do is to help help people get involved in in that process awesome i love it callie don't be a stranger we'll get you on again soon i know you got to run thank you so much for your time thank you. say hello to foster uh say hello to dave curley say yes. hello to everybody uh, I Scott, I know those guys are in the building. And, uh, of course, John P., give him a big hug for me. Well, and, and give Abby a hug for me and a nice little <laughs> pet. And uh, we'll, ta we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. That's Callie Lewis, everyone. We'll be back with a whole lot more Michael Arts' show right after this. Don't go anywhere. Thanks for watching. At Be Terrific, we do a lot of events and bring you a lot of great coverage. But we need to spread the word about Be Terrific, and you guys do a great job of doing that for us. We really appreciate that. But to do it fully, we need branding. And when we do these events, we need to be able to set up quickly and easily and have a home base to be able to create a set, protect our gear, and shield our talent from lights of the event we're in so we can add our own lighting and hang our cameras. We've teamed up with EasyUp to do that for Comic-Con and going forward. They gave us a great shelter that takes no time to set up and also is toolless. It's phenomenal and it's reasonably priced. So whether you have a production company, a media house, or you want to just sell some products at an event, what you need is an EasyUp top. An easy up top is phenomenal. You can do all sorts of branding. You can add side rails like we have. You can add a back wall like we have. And you'll get aerial branding, on the ground branding, and a place to put all your stuff, protect your team, and call home. It's perfect. What you want to do is go to easyup.com. That's easyup.com. Talk to Wayne Dove. He's a sales guy there. He's amazing. He's become a good friend, and he took good care of us. He's the one who got us our tent. They've got great people there, they've got a great team, and they've got a great rich storied history. There's no better shelter, there's no faster shelter than EasyUp. It sets up in minutes, it's fire tested and fire rated, and it's fire retardant. They're really, really structurally sound, and they look beautiful. How could you beat that? Oh yeah, I forgot, they're reasonably priced. So that's the kicker. Go to EasyUp.com. Tell Wayne that Be Terrific sent you. They'll take good care of you, don't worry, and have your company represented well at your next event. And it only takes minutes to set up and break down and then set up again. Look how amazing it looks. I am so excited about this. Thank you, Easy Up. Introducing a portable solar powered charging solution that moves at the speed of life. Family vacations, long road trips, in the airport around campus, on the trail, the lake, or the links. The Duoflex puts the power of the sun in the palm of your hand. With a removable battery pack, dual configuration, and a weather-resistant, rugged design, Duoflex fits every lifestyle and every activity. Freedom to live, to move, to play, to be fully charged. Rode microphones are the official microphones of Be Terrific. Find out more at RodeMic.com.
Welcome back to the Michael Artsis Show. I'm Michael Artsis. Oh, man, I'm so excited. I hope you guys loved that interview as much as I did. Uh, I just could talk to Callie all day and ask a million questions. Thank you guys for watching. I thought it was awesome. We got so much to get to this week. We've got RAR coming in studio tomorrow. Remember RAR? It was that drink I found that had all these vitamins in it that maybe made me better. Maybe it didn't. I don't know. We're going to find out their amazing story tomorrow. They're going to be in studio, and they're bringing cases of RAR. Maybe we'll give one away to one of you guys and get it shipped to you guys like John Starks with that cigar. We've also got something on Wednesday that's going to be unbelievable. And on Thursday, cross our fingers, I'm going to say this, but I believe that U.S. Olympic gold medal goaltender Brianne will be in studio, not with her gold medal, but she will be here. We might have to make her do something fun in the warehouse, and that is like shoot pucks or something. I don't know. We've got to get that goal back together or something that Peter and I ripped apart to get our gear into our storage bin. We're also, I should have talked to Callie about this. We're going to be playing with robotic cameras tonight, which will be super awesome. PTZs. I should have talked to her about that kind of technology. We're going to be testing all sorts of new stuff. So that's cool. And then Toy Fair is Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday at the Jacob K. Javits Center in New York City. We're syndicating to GeekBeat. We will also be there live on BeTerrific.com, and we will be talking about everything toys. We'll see a lot of cool stuff, and it'll be a lot of fun. In addition to that, we, we might, might just have uh, one of the people from um, the show, Jersey Bell, on this week. We're, we're seeing if we can make schedules work for that as well. And, of course, we have a lot of great guests coming up for you guys, so I'm very excited about that. Don't forget, you can hit us up at TV on Twitter and on Instagram, of course, where... Also, at connect at BeTerrific.com if you want to shoot us an email. And we've got our IRC chat underneath the video player on BeTerrific.com slash live. Of course, we're in app as well. Download our app in iTunes and Android, and that is a free app. You can watch us live. You can watch our archive stuff. And, of course, you can follow us and engage us as well. I am so excited about today's show. I'm so excited I got Jack to watch 20 minutes of Back to the Future 2 with me. We've got to figure out something cool to do October 21st, 2015, the day Marty McFly travels to in the future. We definitely have to make that happen. I wonder if that's, I was thinking like that might be during Comic-Con. We got to check that out. And uh, we're working on a whole bunch of all new exciting stuff for you guys as well. I thought to give you updated on the Brian Williams situation, I thought that that situation is progressing in the right way. I love the media has stayed on it, and I love that Brian has taken himself off air, whether that was suggested or him s he figured that out himself. It's a, a great move so far, and I think it's what needed to be done. Other than that, I had a nice relaxing weekend, and I think I'm almost completely done with this cold. <coughs> That's not a prop cough. That is a legitimate cough. I cannot get rid of this thing. It's unbelievable. Um, but uh, hopefully I'm going to go run to some meetings, check out some cool gear, get the show ready for the next week. I will say this. You might want to watch because we are going to be doing some tests. So you might want to keep a check of that feed that we're doing. We are going to be doing some streaming tests. Make sure we're getting everything perfect and try some other ways. So you could watch. We could do some you know, secret streaming. Um, but we are going to uh, do that. I'm going to run and get ready for everything and heal. I don't want to really hurt my voice too much. All right. We'll be back tomorrow with a whole nother Michael Arts show. Roar will be in studio. I'm excited about that. And, of course, the week gets better and better from there. Great start to the week. Callie Lewis, thank you all for watching. Thanks for all chiming in. Thanks for being in our IRC chat. And thanks for watching wherever, wherever, however you're watching. We love you so much. I'm Michael Arts. Be terrific.